Section 41 of Lives of the Most Remarkable Criminals Who Have Been Condemned and Executed for Murder, the Highway, Housebreaking, Street Robberies, Coining, or Other Offenses, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Miles lives of the most remarkable criminals who have been condemned and executed volume one edited by arthur l hayward section forty one the lives of john Terrell, a horse dealer and william hawksworth a murderer the lives of john Terrell, a horse dealer and william hawksworth a murderer john Terrell, the first of these malefactors was convicted for stealing two horses in yorkshire but selling them in smithfield he was tried at the old bailey it seems he had been an old horse stealer as most people conjecture though he himself denied it and as he pretended at his trial to have bought those two for which he died at northampton fair so he continually endeavored to infuse the same notions into all persons who spoke to him at the time of his death he had practiced carrying horses over into flanders and germany and there selling them to persons of the highest rank with whom he always dealt so justly and honorably that as it was said his word would have gone there for any sum whatsoever that was to be laid out in horseflesh he had been bred up a dissenter and above all things affected the character of a religious and sober man which excepting the instances for which he died he never seemed to have forfeited for whatever else was said against him after he was condemned arose merely from conjectures occasioned by the number of horses he had sold in foreign parts he himself professed that he had always led a most regular and devout life and in the frequent voyages he made by sea exhorted the sailors to leave that dissolute manner of life which too generally they led during the whole time he lay under sentence he talked of nothing else but his own great piety and devotion which though as he confessed it had often been rewarded by many singular deliverances through the hand of providence yet since he was suffered to die this ignominious death and thereby disgrace his family and altogether overturn that reputation of sanctity with which so much pains himself had been setting up he inclined to atheistic notions and a wavering belief as to the being of a god at all as for the other malefactor william hawksworth he was a yorkshireman by birth his parents reputable people who took a great care in his reputation intended to breed him to some good trade but a regiment of soldiers happening to come into the town hawksworth imagining great things might be attained to in the army would needs go with them and accordingly listed himself but having run through many difficulties and much hardships finding also that he was like to meet with little else while he wore a red coat he took a great deal of pains and made much interest to be discharged at last he effected it and a gentleman kindly taking him to live with him as a footman he there recovered part of that education which he had lost while in the army there also he addicted himself for some time to a sober and quiet life but soon after giving way to his old roving disposition he went away from his master and listed himself again in the army in one of the regiments of the guards his behavior the last time of his being in the service was honest and regular his officers giving him a very good character and nobody else a bad one but happening to be one day commanded on a party to mount guard at the admiralty office by charing cross they met a man and a woman the man's name was john ransom and this hawksworth stepping up to the woman and going to kiss her ransom interposed and pushed him off upon which hawksworth knocked him down with the butt end of his piece by which blow about nine o'clock that evening he died 
the prisoner insisted continually that as he had no design to kill the man it was not wilful murder he and tyrrell died with less confusion and seeming concern than most malefactors do tyrrell was about thirty and hawksworth in the twenty-eighth year of his age on the seventeenth of june seventeen twenty three end of section forty one